Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian. I work at Customer.io, where we have a product for sending automated, personalized messages. And our main dashboard app is written in Ember. Recently, we started using TypeScript in writing our, our app. And I'd like to share the experience of how it actually looked to introduce TypeScript into a production app of, of this size. So what is TypeScript? Uh, strictly speaking, it's one of those, one of many compiled to JavaScript languages, like CoffeeScript, most famously. Unlike it and most of the others, it doesn't really propose a new syntax. It's not a new language. It only, it's only adds type annotations on top of vanilla JavaScript, which can be made fully optional. So you can still keep writing regular JavaScript, and it will work, only not be typed as, as much as like. Uh, that's exactly what TypeScript Babel plugin does. It only strips the type annotations. It's also used internally in core Ember code base. Most famously, Glimmer is written entirely in TypeScript. But other projects use it too, Ember data as well. Benefits of using TypeScript are the same as using any other strongly typed language. It's not a real type language in the sense that it still gets compiled down to JavaScript, which is executed in the browser and definitely non-typed. But for our practical purposes, let's say this. So first of all, uh, by using TypeScript, you can document your code in a seamless and always up-to-date way. When you add type annotations to your code, you are making sure that all the parameters are described and all your classes and functions are always used correctly. Type safety. Uh, in a type code base, you can always be sure that they are yeah, used correctly. And typed code is much less fragile and much safer to refactor than regular JavaScript. Then we have editor integrations. Uh, it's just more pleasant to work with typed languages. The type annotations are used to for auto-suggestions or automatic imports of dependencies. They also give you instant feedback on any type errors that you might have in your, in your code. Then typing your code can also be considered a form of testing it. It can free you up from writing some boilerplate type-based tests and focus on testing your key business logic. It still needs to be done. Typing your code doesn't mean you don't have to test it, like some people sometimes seem to say. So why did we choose to try TypeScript? First, some background. Uh, so our customer IO Ember app is a classic, classic dashboard app. It has evolved and grown over the last several years. We started using it at writing it at the first major Ember release. It was in 2013. We have around 60,000 lines of application code and around twice as much of tests. The point here is that it's not a small app nor is it really young. It's a real production app and has been used and developed over for a long time now. The idea of typing customer IO front-end app started floating around our team some time ago. It was mostly motivated by our experience of migrating the backend code base from Rails, from Ruby, to Golang, which is strongly typed. Also recently, we're working on some complex new features and major changes to existing ones, and wanted to see if types would help in these efforts now and in the future. We also wanted to make working on our project simply more pleasant. This, there's an element of jealousness about the great developer experience you have when working with Golang that we didn't get when working on our JavaScript code base. Finally, we just wanted to try it out. None of us have tried using Ember with TypeScript before, and we wanted to see how it will work out in practice. Will it actually help us be more efficient and make our work more pleasant? It also happens that only recently native JavaScript classes and decorators entered stable Ember releases. Typing Ember application was possible for a long time already, even before native classes were available, just harder and not exactly in a standard way. The type notations were kind of awkward. Uh, here I'm linking to a series 
of blog posts written in 2017 and 18 by Chris Krichow, who is the main guy behind Ember CLI TypeScript, the main add-on that you're going to be using if you want to use TypeScript in your Ember application. And it gives you some context on how it looked a year or two ago to, to try to type your Ember application. It used to be much harder than it is today. Overall, it just felt like a good timing to try it out, bite the bullet and try it out, but feeling safe that there won't be any really major breaking changes from now on. So to use TypeScript in your Ember app, it's pretty simple. You have to install the add-on that I've just mentioned, and then you have to start writing TypeScript, which can be as easy as renaming your JS files to use TS file extension. The installer of, of this add-on also does some smart things like installing all the typings that it thinks that you will need in your application, Ember core typings. It will also update, update application blueprints used when you generate new components and controllers and routes. And the whole experience wasn't that much harder for us. I'm happy to say that it was really quick and, and easy to transition to, to writing most of our new code in TypeScript and to start typing our code base as we work on it. Still mostly focusing on, on core widely reused modules. It's going to take a while in, in a code base of this size, of course. A common theme when typing an existing JavaScript code base seems to be discovering bugs on the way that would otherwise go unnoticed, or even code that simply never worked in the first place. So it is with us. We credit our extensive test suites with not finding any major bugs, but smaller errors are constantly coming up and can be fixed, thanks to TypeScript. We also made a, an effort to type code behind selected more complex features of our app, and it did, they, it, did, it did make a real difference, making it much easier to navigate and work on them. What we are not doing and not really planning to do, we are not black and white about TypeScript. It's perfectly OK if the working parts of our code base just stay untyped for the time being. We're not really purist about it. And this also makes the whole effort much less scary for us. If someone cannot really type something on, or doesn't want to, or it just seems harder than, than it's actually worth at, at any moment, then we're OK with not doing it. We have a big code base that's not really broken, and typing is not supposed to get in the way of shipping actual features. We don't plan on doing any big rewrites just to type our, our code. We also didn't really end up dedicated to typing our tests. We start adding new tests in TypeScript, and the experience, again, is much better than when you write JavaScript. But we don't see that much value in converting any existing tests, some of them really big ones, to TypeScript, at least compared to, to the main application code. So it's all working out pretty well for us so far. Uh, now I'd like to go over some various observations from our experience, some of them subjective and specific to, to our app, and hopefully giving you an idea of some dilemmas and problems that you may encounter if you decide to start typing your Ember app. Biggest change for us wasn't actually adding types, it was transitioning away from the from usage of Ember objects native classes with decorators. As I've said, our app was created several years ago, before native classes were even a thing. And only several minor versions ago, they entered stable Ember releases. What it means is that before we introduced TypeScript, you weren't using native classes at all. There's a code mod that you can use to convert existing Ember object classes to native ones which I strongly recommend trying out. We've had many mixed issues, uh, mixed results with it. Converting simpler modules worked fine, but some of the bigger ones were simply broken. 
within and emerging this work. If that's the case with you, then converting them by hand as you go is also an option. It's not like it will break your application if you leave Ember objects in it. Uh, the process in most cases is really quick and simple, so it's not a big deal. A word about mixins. So using Ember object mixins with native classes and TypeScript is possible, but in many cases not exactly a smooth experience. You can expect some weird and surprising errors related to TypeScript or just classes themselves that you have to work around in some way. Better solution is to simply migrate away from them. Most often you can quite easily use pure functions or classic class inheritance instead. The only exception seems to be some mixings that are supplied by popular add-ons and may not, not be so easy to, to stop using. Our code is not really mixing heavy, so it wasn't a big issue for us, but your experience may be different. It's something to, to look out for. Another thing related to classes, and not really TypeScript itself, is you cannot really reopen JavaScript classes. Cleanest solution is to migrate reopening classes to just extending from a custom native class instead. In our case, we open native Ember classes quite a lot, like root classes and controller classes. And what we ended up doing instead of doing this huge diff on the code base and updating all the blueprints as well is just to add more types to the base Ember class and keep the reopen call that we're doing on the Ember objects. It's not really the way it's supposed to be done, but it's convenient. And code behind this doesn't really change often. So just to give you some idea of shortcuts that sometimes may be good and sensible to make. A good example of a well-known add-on that doesn't play so well with native classes and TypeScript is Ember Concurrency, which we use a lot. It's possible to either keep adding tasks using Ember Object Extend method. This is not always possible. For example, you cannot extend a native class like this. You can only extend Ember Objects. It's also possible to use the creators which are available in a separate repository, separate project called Ember Concurrency Decorators. But because of how the creators work in JavaScript, you can't expect correct types on your tasks unless you add them manually. There is a new syntax that's in the works. It's a bit awkward, but it's fully typed and also based on the creators. It's already available as a alpha release. It's being worked on right now and should make it soon to, to the main Ember concurrency add-on. This is one of the many examples showing that TypeScript in Ember is still a work in progress and still improved every day. It's a good practice and a nice thing to, to keep referencing existing Ember apps written in TypeScript. The uh, most popular example seems to be front-end for the Open Science Framework project. It's a decent-sized real-life project. It's fully open source. It's completely in TypeScript. And it's a good source of example types, vendor package typings, or add-on typings, or just inspiration about when you're not sure how to do something in Ember with TypeScript. It answers most of these questions. Any and unknown types in TypeScript allow you to skip adding actual type definitions to some values. TS ignore comment in the code can be used to silence any TypeScript errors. Your code will still compile down to valid JavaScript. It's not a real type to language, again. So I think this is a pretty big and uh, subjective one. We are quite liberal about using them. Actually, this is what I credit with seamlessly adopting TypeScript in our project and team. It was very easy and smooth because we didn't force anyone to, to use it. Again, shipping meaningful work is the, the biggest priority. And if types are not helping with it, then it's fine to skip adding some of them. We're, we're fine just picking out the, the easy bits and forgetting about the rest, at least for the time being. 
fully typing our code base will be a long-term effort. It will happen, but sometimes are still better than, than none. What to type first? This is fairly easy. The consensus is to focus on the core models and services, which are often reused in all the places in your app. And also, you have modules which are very easy to type, so-called leaf modules, so often pure functions with no dependencies or, or little dependencies, like utils and helpers. Then, typing tests. Uh, something to start with is short helpers, scenario builders, models, but again, they don't have nearly as much impact on, the, on your application than the actual application code. So it may be not worth the effort to focus on them. There are some limitations. Most of them can be worked around. Some of them are, are here to stay for the time being with TypeScript and Ember. The biggest one is lack of typing in the templates. Templates are not type checked at all. So you can make all kinds of mistakes there, and they won't be detected. Some initial work has been done on it, but it's not looking to be ready anytime soon. The rest are kind of obvious and pretty minor. So if you want to type your code, you must learn to do it, learning at least the basic concepts around, around strong typing, which is not so obvious because we are all front-end developers, and maybe not all of us, but most of us, and we didn't work with type languages, most of us, again. <laughs> the rest of your team must learn them too, and your team must be on board with this. They must actually start adding types to, to the code. If you're the only person in the team who does that, then it's kind of pointless. But again, this is something that TypeScript makes fairly easy because it's just JavaScript with types. And you can actually skip adding types if you don't feel comfortable or don't know the syntax or just need to do something quickly. Then next, including TypeScript compiler into the, the build pipeline, it does make some difference in how fast your app is built, at least in large projects. It did in our case. It's not a big deal, but it's something worth mentioning. And then are, there are some things, mostly Ember-specific, that simply won't be working with TypeScript, or even just native classes, like nested key lookups and sending actions from your JavaScript code. But all of them are either is it refactored away from, or there are, they have workarounds that you can use. I listed some links here, which I think are a good start if you're considering writing your Ember app in TypeScript. So first of them is typed Ember organization on GitHub. It's an active and official team responsible for Ember CI TypeScript add-on, and most of work behind making Ember and TypeScript work together so well. Second one is Ember CLI TypeScript documentation, which goes in depth on instructions around setting up your Ember project, all the best practices, as well as current limitations, and why something cannot be done, like the templates. I've already mentioned the third one. I've already mentioned typing your Ember. It's a blog post series by Chris Krichel, the main dev behind Ember CLI TypeScript and also member of the typed Ember team. And then the last one, it's a great talk by James Davies, given on this year's EmberConf. It's less focused on introducing TypeScript into a specific production app, more on the big picture of TypeScript in Ember and how the actual typed Ember code looks like. And James is also a member of the typed Ember team. That's everything from me. Thanks a lot.